Good morning, everybody. So this is our Sunday forecast. We're going to go through the same exact process, which is the fundamentals part first, and then we're going to go into the technical analysis, and we're going to have Stefanos take over for that one. How's it going, guys? <laughs> Hope everyone's doing well. So let's start off with just uh, some global economics. Last week, we had the G7 meeting, and now the G7, which are the, the richest seven countries, now they're coming to a deal to help countries collect more taxes from big companies and enable uh, governments to impose pretty much more taxes on US giant techs. So basically what this means is we've seen a lot of corporations uh, say that, you know, they're operating out of a different country or something like that to kind of save on taxes. Uh, but now with the G7 agreement, if a country, for example, that's a US giant says that they're operating mainly out of uh, Europe or some other country that's part of the G7, then they are still going to have to pay at least a 15% tax, yeah. a minimum corporate tax rate of at least 15% on foreign earnings and paves the way for uh, levies on multinationals um, in countries where they make money. So what we've seen is with a lot of corporations, if you actually look into them, they say that if there's high taxes, for example, in the United States, they'll say that a oh, majority of our profits actually came from a different country. And that's how they kind of play around with this system. But now, obviously, uh, the governments are trying to catch on to them. But again, G7 isn't a real organization in the sense that if you look up G7, they're not legally on an international level recognized anywhere. So it's just an informal agreement between seven rich countries. That's it. So if they were to go away, right, like overnight, like there's no legal way for us to be like, oh, that was a real organization. It's yeah. not. That's pretty alarming. Yeah. Um, and that's how all the G groups are, G20, G7, G8, all these uh, different groups that you see, all these meetings, none of them are actual real organizations or institutions. Mm. So there's no way for them to be like, okay, this is the rule. This is the law. This is the new, like, you know, whatever we're coming out with and you have to implement it. Uh, these are just agreements between the seven richest countries. So these seven wow. richest countries, they're actually just, and the finance ministers, they're just agreeing that, okay, I, if your company comes into my country, uh, country and they try to do you know, business here and they tell you that majority of their profits are coming from my country, then I'm still going to tax them. This is our agreement. Wow. But that's pretty much what's going on here. That's is that this where their headquarters, so they're still going to be uh, paying taxes on foreign earnings wherever they are, wherever they make money. Yeah, that's honestly pretty alarming that it's not like an actual government, you know, entity. Yeah. It's just yeah. like private people with their with their own, you know, economic and political agendas. And, you know, wow, that's, yeah. that's pretty. Uh, <laughs> and so <laughs> we're seeing something new every day. <laughs> and so we saw this again coming from the United States. And it seems like in this situation, United States is one of the biggest pushers of this uh, of this deal that they're making. Um, and again, it's because the Biden administration was heavy on taxing the rich, taxing the wealth instead of just the income and taxing corporations. So what, oh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I was just gonna say, well, what they don't realize is that the rich is actually paying most of the tax. Mm -hmm. You know, don't they pay something like 80% of the tax? Corporations pay a lot less. So you could- I, I agree with that. Yeah. I think I think corporate, like large corporations like Amazon should be paying some more. But, you know, at the same time, you got to look at the fact that they employ more people than anybody, you know, they, they add to the economy and, but they should be paying more tax. I do agree right. with that. And majority of the taxes that come from individuals. So you could like pull up the treasury's report and you would see the entire breakdown of the taxes that are being paid exactly yeah. by who and where do they go to as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the reason why I want to bring this up is because as always, you're always going to find corporations finding a new loophole, maybe mm -hmm. moving to a different country for operations, whatever it is. Um, find a way. Right. And so this is where when you start seeing any sort of market fear settling in. So I know this is for corporations, but even for wealthy individuals and large investors, they're going to start moving from some of these risk currencies and they're going to be like, OK, where can I park my money and where it's going to be safe? So this is uh, a further confirmation from a fundamental side for commodities like gold. And then also there was some news about oil and that's because of whatever's happening in the Middle East. But you're seeing a lot of these safe haven currencies and commodities starting to pick up again, because now this is gonna cause a little bit of uncertainty 
there are obviously major multinational corporations that are based out of the United States working in Europe, working in a lot of these other countries that are part of the G7. Yeah. And now we want to see like, okay, how are they going to, obviously they're going to have to pay a little bit of more taxes, but they're going to try their best to not, right? Always to find another way out. And then another thing that I want to go into just very quickly is that the United States finally hits 3 million doses and the UK and they're, they're talking, the UK is talking about opening up uh, their borders. So with the UK, what's going on is you have a new variant that's coming out. Everyone's obviously very eager. Everyone's looking towards June 21st. And I do think that as we approach June 21st, we are going to start seeing some big moves, whether it's going to be bullish or bearish. That's again, going to depend on the market sentiment and the fundamentals. But I think we are going to see big moves as we approach June 21st. And that's because that's when the economy is supposed to open up. A lot more sectors of the UK economy is supposed to open up. Uh, mm -hmm. But they had the new variant, the Indian variant there. They started to see cases increasing. And so Boris Johnson actually has expressed concerns around easing the restrictions. But he is getting pressurized from his officials saying that, no, you have to ease the restrictions. I mean, this is what uh, you know people are looking towards and all of that. Yeah. But there's another article that we're going to go over shortly where the health secretary, and it says it right here as well, the health secretary is actually concerned. And they're saying that we're going to look at the data that comes in into the next week or so. And then that's when we're going to make our decision whether or not we're going to reopen the economy. But right now, that is a concern um, because of the new variant and the increasing cases. On the other hand, the United States is kind of lagging right behind that situation where we're starting to administer more than 3 million COVID-19 vaccines. Um, new cases and deaths, they're continuing to plunge, so decrease, um, and we're getting back to the levels just before we impose restrictions in March 2020. So we are getting ready to come back to that level of where UK is right now, where they're starting to talk about reopening their economy. We are seeing a lot of states throughout the United States here opening up their economy, but everyone's kind of sitting at a different level. Some yes. uh, states are completely opened up. You go to Vegas. I mean, that thing's just, you know, everyone's partying. You have Miami, Crazy, all right? of that. And we're opening California, up too out here. Where in, in Jersey? Yeah, in Jersey, we're, um, uh, uh, Murphy ended the state of emergency on the state. Mm -hmm. So that kind of restricts some of his powers that, that he has, but he still has uh, a lot of what he can do. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, I, I can walk into the gym. I don't have to wear a mask. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, and this is mainly for people that are vaccinated, too. Right. Um, but like, you know, it's it's pretty much open. Like like once they release the mass uh, mandate on um, people that are vaccinated, most people, it's just like almost like like, what are you going to ask people if they're vaccinated and stuff like that? It's very hard to to tell who actually is. So it's 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 like normal life again. It's kind of yeah. crazy. And it's weird at the same time. But um it's nice well we're like halfway there in california where some stores if you just like walk into them they'll have a sign that oh, if you're vaccinated you don't have to wear a mask but mm -hmm. if you're not then please do yeah. and then some say that regardless of whether you're vaccinated or not you have to wear a mask so mm -hmm. we're kind of like halfway there where certain stores are saying like okay it's fine some are saying no <laughs> like yeah so and i think it comes down to what exactly you said how do you know who's vaccinated and how do you know who's not vaccinated I, I think it's right when it comes to private companies, you know, you can make your own decision. If, if you want people to walk in with a mask, they, they got to put on a mask or you're not going to serve them. You know, right. I like, you know, most stores that I walk in now, you don't have to wear a mask. But, um, you know, I went on the train yesterday. Like I said, I was reading that article. Um, as soon as I got on, the conductor was like, you got to wear your mask. So everyone on the train been dipping their hands in some yeah. <laughs> Um, But yeah, like, like they said, the health secretary in the UK is saying that it's too early to say whether... Um, the planned easing of restrictions on June are a go ahead or not. Yeah. So that's what we're seeing. And then if you go further down, then you would see like uh, small updates throughout the article. So you can definitely check this out. Another thing that I want to go over is before actually this article, we saw US starting to ship out uh, vaccines to a lot of other countries. So you have South Korea, they were also talking about Mexico, they were also talking about Canada. So now, as we start to vaccinate more people, and again, we've talked about this a couple of different times on our Instagram lives and you know weekly outlooks and all of that, where you need to get, as a global economy, we need to get a handle on our vaccinations, especially mm -hmm. the developing countries, because that's where 
uh, majority of the variants are coming from of the new virus. And so a lot of these countries, developing countries, they're not able to afford vaccinations or like a huge supply of vaccines for their uh, population, for their entire population. And so that's why uh, we, there was actually an article about the US and WTO teaming up to donate a lot of vaccines to uh, developing countries. So right now, uh, President Joe Biden's administration announced that it would donate an initial amount of 25 million doses to dozens of countries, and then 1 million of Johnson & Johnson doses were shipped from the U.S. last Thursday to arrive in South Korea early Saturday morning, so which was uh, yesterday. And so we're seeing South Korea, you have Mexico, you have Canada, you have, I think, I believe it was Africa as well. Uh, where they were shipping out vaccinations. And then also India is falling behind on their supply as well, because as soon as they were get, able to get a handle on their first wave, they just start shipping out vaccines to other countries. And then when the second wave started, that's when the government said, well, we don't have enough vaccines. We don't know what to do about it. So they're literally sharing oxygen tanks among patients. They're sharing beds. <laughs> people, are, people are sleeping in the same bed. Yeah. You same have like hospital. Two- it's crazy. Yeah, you have like two, three people just laying on the same bed, sharing the same oxygen tank. It's it's ridiculous. Um, I'm a yeah, I'm a believer in karma. So if they were shipping that vaccines after the first uh, wave, then I'm sure uh, the world's going to come to to help them out. Yeah, Hopefully. absolutely. Um, but that's what you have right now. So you have U.S. stepping up on June 4th. This is when the article came out. And then recently, now you have the U.K. saying like, okay, we're uh, getting ready to donate more than 100 million vaccines as well. So slowly you're going to start seeing a lot of these developing countries uh, stepping up and actually donating a lot of vaccines that since they've already vaccinated the majority of their population now, stepping up to send vaccines to other developing countries. It's the only way the whole world is going to kind of get rid of this thing. Right. And then again, it's the the current vaccines. And then as the new variants evolve, the vaccines, they're just going to become less effective. So there's always going to be new research and development but at the moment, they're working with whatever vaccines that they have because it's going to, it's going to be somewhat effective, if not entirely, mm-hmm. right? At least you're not going to die <laughs> if yeah. you do catch COVID after the yeah. vaccine. Exactly. Uh, the UK, yeah, the UK security. government is going to be donating more than 100 million coronavirus vaccinations to developing countries. Uh, so Boris Johnson is set to pledge to donate more than 2 billion pounds of shots at a summit of leaders at the group of seven, so it's a G7 starting Friday in the UK, and then it promises to donate even more uh, the next year. Mm. The source, um, you know, where, where this came from, they, they should be held responsible by the rest of the world. I don't know why nobody is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know, you know, some people are putting their foot down a little bit, but like they need to do a lot more when it comes to like solving this thing, because it obviously leaked out of the lab or whatever happened. Uh, we, we really don't know, but, you know, it, it did come from your country. And then all of a sudden, videos and pictures are coming out from your country showing people at concerts and everything while the rest of the world's suffering like what what's going there on with that, that you know? there was actually an article that came out i think it was last week or the week before that where uh u.s was starting to do some research into okay how did this virus come about to be was it lab or like you know was mm-hmm. it animal or whatever and china there's news about china that they were not cooperating with the research at all Oh, yeah. No. And and I don't know where you stand on it, but like a lot of people have been saying this from the very beginning. I thought that there was something going on when it comes to like it, it came out. They, they lied, lied about it a little bit uh, to protect the state, kind of like the whole Chernobyl event uh, out in Ukraine. Um, and they, they just, you know, they wanted to cover the state. But when it comes to letting international flights go out, but no domestic flights mm-hmm. travel throughout China. Like, what's that about? But now all this is coming out. You know, I don't know if you saw stuff with Dr. Fauci and and all that. It's like, you know, a lot of people have been saying this for quite some time now. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, there's that. And it's also, they were saying like, well, if we can't figure out how this virus came about to be, and there's a new virus that comes out, like, how are we going to handle that? Right. And so I do think there is a sense of responsibility that needs to be taken. But again, we're not going to get into like the entire politics of it. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, we don't. But we don't yeah, I do agree. I mean, the cooperation has to be there because just because you want to save your state, now you have the whole entire global economy just kind of shut down and struggling to get out now. Yeah. 
uh, but this is an article that I was talking about earlier where um, UK's health secretary is saying that it's too early to decide on the June 21st um, easing of restrictions. So they're actually going to start looking at the data uh, over the next week. And again, this is going to be um, any health data. So are the cases increasing? Are the deaths related to cases increasing? And pretty much all that. And like vaccinations, like what, what's all the data around that? Yeah. So they're not saying no to the 21st of June at this point, but there is still a sort of uncertainty. They could open up the entire economy, but they could have certain restrictions. Uh, for example, you have to wear masks. Uh, or if you are traveling, then you have to have like a 14 day stay or like a 10 day stay. So there are other restrictions that can be applied, um, even if they do decide to open up the entire economy. Yeah. So that was like pretty much of like uh, of the macro global uh, fundamentals that we're taking a look at. And then here's the economic calendar. So we still have the G7 meeting or yesterday we have the G7 meetings um, that concluded. And then today we have a ton of, it's not, it seems like uh, from the Asian session, we have a ton of uh, news coming out from Australia. You have China, you have Japan. Uh, but other than that, there's, it's a pretty easy start to the week. Uh, mm -hmm. Going into Monday, you have HPI coming out. But the most important thing that I would probably pay attention to if you're trading any euro pair would be the investor confidence. So you want to take a look at what's the outlook of the investors here. So this is based on the on the surveyed investors and analysts, and you can also come down here to take a look at why do you care as a trader. So it's a leading indicator of health economics. So investors and analysts are highly informed by the virtue of their job. So it's whatever their sentiment is, it's it can be an early signal of the future economic activity. So that's something that I would pay attention to definitely. Uh, but again, take all of this as like a, a grain of salt, right? So just because they came out, they came out with a positive number does not mean that the euro is going to gain strength overnight or anything like that. Uh, but it's just once you start understanding all these fundamentals and you start, you know, you, you get a sense of what's the economic condition overall and then use that to kind of identify like PMI, NFP, things like that. Mm. Um, you're able to figure out what's the higher impact news. And they have then, a big meeting coming up, correct? When it comes to um, any kind of, uh, they, they had their purchasing um emergency purchasing program mm -hmm. um that 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 they're rolling out but they're thinking about coming back on it and and uh kind of tapering when it comes to that but they had a meeting that they were waiting for in mm -hmm. june i was just reading about uh, yeah, that was, I, I believe that was the united states as well with the fed the uh, that yeah. They were, yeah that they were trying to taper back but uh i think it was powell who came out and he said that we're not we're not going to be increasing interest rates we're not going to be doing anything uh, that's going to harm the economy at this point. So the tapering uh, or like scaling back of the assistance and asset purchase and all of that is still kind of like up in the air. They're still discussing it. A lot of people, they're, you know, they're saying like, this is the right time. Uh, we cannot afford to have like all these like corporate bonds and like all these stuff on our balance sheet right now. We need to sell this. And a lot of people are saying like, no, it's way too early to do that. Um, and we're seeing that across the board. So not even just the United States, but you have the European Central Bank. You also have the Bank of England. So a lot of these countries are starting to talk about it as they emerge out of these lockdowns. That's why I think this jolts job meetings or job openings over mm -hmm. here. Uh, this is going to be on, on Tuesday, 7 a.m. coming out for the U.S. Yep. Um, a lot of talk has been coming out when it comes to people not taking jobs because the government is paying them. And mm -hmm. I think this is going to be a big number down here. Mm -hmm. uh, if this comes out positive, it, it's showing that the economy is increasing and it is uh, doing much better. And that will show that the Fed can now start tapering and uh, taking away you know, some of this uh, economic aid or some of the bond buying um, mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. So I think that'll, that'll be a big number to come out, even though it's a yellow folder. That's yeah. something that I think a lot of people are paying attention to. In the labor market itself, there's a couple of different factors that are being put into play. The first one is exactly what you said, the government assistance. But also there was, uh, the government's actually interfering now indirectly. And it was mainly through what we uh, discussed, I think it was like a week ago or two weeks ago, where Biden said that if you're offered a job, then you should take it, a suitable job, then you should mm -hmm. take it or else you're going to risk losing your unemployment benefits. So you have that where the government is interfering to try to help the labor market. And obviously there's going to be a lot of different methods to do that. But then also a lot of people, they're refusing to take jobs if 
if they're not getting paid higher than what they were before, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Which so honestly makes like, sense. But I mean, uh, the, the average person, the average American is, is going to choose leisure over work. Um, there's that, but it's also like a lot of these like low income families, middle income families, they've been suffering so much because of the pandemic. They obviously have to make the money in order mm -hmm. to survive post pandemic, yeah. right? So there's no job shortage, but you have shortage of people who are willing to work on low wages now. Yeah. Yeah, that um, makes sense. Yeah. So th again, job openings is something that you want to pay attention to. Every Thursday, you're going to get unemployment claims. You want to pay attention to that. And then that's what's going to lead up to NFP that a lot of people look towards uh, to trade. Um, so going into like Tuesday, London session, you have a ton of Euro news coming out. But again, on Tuesday, the most important thing uh, would be a New York session, which would be the job openings. And so this is personally what I would be trading on Tuesday. You have a lot of like low impact news coming out. Um, if you're trading Aussie, then you would look at the consumer sentiment. Uh, but going into Wednesday, you have the interest rates coming out of Canada and US, you have crude oil inventory. So if you're trading oil or USD CAD, that's something that you would take a look at. And also the 10 year bond auction, all that stuff. That's something that you want to pay attention to. And then I do believe that by Wednesday, either like late New York session or Asian session, you're probably going to see the market kind of slowing down. And that's because you have Euro uh, interest rates coming out on Thursday. So you have Euro interest rates, you have um, the press yeah. conference that follows the monetary policy statement. And if anything, pay more attention to this right here, the policy statement. They're going to tell you exactly what their outlook is. And they're also going to tell you exactly what they're looking at in order to increase the interest rates or scale back on anything. So they usually tell you that towards the end. So definitely pay attention to that. You have CPI and then unemployment claims. So pay attention to CPI as well and then unemployment claims. So Thursday, uh, late uh, London session, pre-New York, New York session, it's very fundamental heavy. So I would say really go in and make sure that whenever you're trading, you're getting your confirmations, whether it's impulse trade or like break or retest or whatever your strategy is, make sure you're waiting for the confirmation. You're being pretty patient with the trades overall. And then Thursday, you have a very heavy uh, fundamental pre-London session where you have a ton of GBP news coming out. And when you see a ton of GBP news in a row like this, as soon as the London session opens up, give it about 15 to 30 minutes, let the market price in all these fundamentals and you're gonna see a, a nice movement. I think you'll probably see consolidation happening or something like that. And there'll be some nice movements afterwards. Uh, it's a but, great point for anyone trading London. Yeah. And then Friday in New York session, you have consumer sentiment, inflation expectations. Yep. And then you also have G7 <laughs> happening. Um, so out of the entire week, I believe Thursday would be the most fundamental heavy day. So that's something that you want to uh, pay attention to. Do you want to add anything else here, Stephanos? Yeah, I mean, the, the CPI, I think that's what a lot of people are looking forward to. You know, mm -hmm. uh, after April came out kind of crazy, what was it, 4.6, 4.2? Um, that, that's something that a lot of people are taking an eye on. Um, and then Treasury yields drifted lower, so did the dollar. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we'll we'll see what happens with uh, CPI this week, and then obviously unemployment claims is going to be big as well. But yeah. you know, um, unemployment claims dropped. I think what was it below four hundred thousand for the first time since before the pandemic, which yep. is a pretty big deal. So uh, yep. we'll be keeping an eye on that. And you know, Thursday is going to be a good day for people to trade. Uh, I think you know Wednesday too, but um, for the most part, Thursday and Friday are going to be uh, some good volume days. Yeah. And so the way to use unemployment claims to get ready for NFP is just look at, are you pretty much hitting like, you know, positive numbers the entire month, right? <clears throat> every, every Thursday, you're going to get unemployment claims. And then pair this up with Jolt's job openings or like ADP non-form that you get on Thursdays right before NFP comes out. So pair it up with other unemployment news and you'll get a gist of, okay, are you looking for positive news on NFP? Or are you looking for negative news? It's just going to give you a gist of it. Are you ready to move on to the technical side? Let's do it. Um, All right. So uh, looking over here at the monthly on GJ, we're in a pretty interesting area right up here at uh, 156, obviously holding a strong resistance over here. But if you look 
all to the left over here, 155, obviously a very significant level over here, previous support, previous resistance and support. But if you look over here, when we were in the, kind of the recovery from the economic crisis over here, uh, when price fell back in 2008, 2009, uh, we were in this recovery state where we created a support down at 119,500. Uh, held this support, and then we just started this economic recovery, kind of like what we're doing over here with COVID. COVID, we had this little crash over here. Very interesting that we never closed below these levels of Brexit and then also the 2008 market crash. But uh, we created this low right down here at 124, uh, grabbed liquidity down here, and then just started heading up, right? So <clears throat> right now in this area, you want to just look to your left, and see where were we at that same exact point at that same price, what ended up happening. We had this little consolidation area around 155, 156, creating this resistance, and then price just pushed right through, right? So now looking over here, you have these candle body closes to the left over here, and that looks like we're retesting that area, right? So if you wanna mark off 155 uh, coordinates, 155. Get those candle body closes over there. We closed above last month during May. So right now, it looked like we grabbed liquidity a little bit. And now we're starting to head down. Uh, we have some positives coming out of Japan. Uh, but also, you know, we could just be grabbing liquidity to head right back up. And that's what it looks like to me. Uh, I, you know, there is no reason to be selling GJ right now unless you're looking for a little quick collective uh, corrective scalp um, to, to take price down to a, a key level to take price right back up. But other than that, when it comes to long any any long term, there's no reason to be selling GJ. Uh, GJ is typically a very risk pair that you know you're going to be buying once once risk is up and and people are starting to get back into the uh, into work and and the economies are, are going pretty well. Obviously, Japan and the yen is a very safe haven currency as well. It's just like the dollar, so you're going to be seeing the Japanese yen on its way down as well. So. Right now, it looks like we're retesting this level, these candle, candle body highs, 155, very significant level, as well as 156. So I see us filling this wick up here that we created at 156, let's say 700. And then obviously filling this area, we may have some issues over here. But other than that, I do see price continuing bullish as long as uh, Great Britain starts continuing to open their economy. Uh, and you know the, the Indian variant isn't too much of a big deal. So looking over here at the weekly now, we could start drawing some uh, support and resistance. And um, looking over here, we had this corrective state that we were in where we created the support. And then if you look left, we got these candle body closes to the left as well that we were reacting to creating a support. We created our high, it comes down, price retest the previous candle body highs to the left over here. And then we just continue up. So 150 nine 150 uh i would say no 149 excuse me and 150 were very significant level over here for price to create support and continue up to retest these highs just like you see in the lower time frames when price creates a high comes down consolidates a little bit and then retests that high or just comes down creates a support and then continues right back up these are nice candles over here and I'm just going to point something out kind of uh, off subject, but at the same time, you do want to pay attention to candles like this, especially on the lower time frames on GJ. When you get a top wick like this and price closing by a support, uh, you, you do get that, that bearish flip. A lot of times I see on the lower time frames, these wicks get filled, right? We end up holding the support and we continue right back up to fill that wick. So keep an eye on, uh, on these kind of candles. You know, we point out to, uh, I'm sure you point out this to your group as well, but you know, we talk about these candles all the time when it comes to scalps and seeing support form, seeing a bearish bearish candle like that. It's uh, it's nice to fill, uh, knowing that price there, there is a high probability, especially in an uptrend, for price to fill that wick. Mm -hmm. But looking up here, price is in this bullish trend. Uh, we are in this corrective state. Previous weekly candle uh, closed bearish. Are we going to get a further bearish move this week, continuing down into this area? to then continue right back up, or are we gonna continue all the way right back down to 153, these candle body closes to then hold support right here and then continue right back up. Could very another, well happen. Another thing is if you go back to the left. Sure, um, I just wanna mark off 156 real quick. Ooh, I almost got it. All right, let's take a look to the left. So here to How the far? left, 
Um, no, just zoom out a little bit and then a little bit too. Yeah. There you go. So right, yeah, right into that area. If you take a look, there's a ton of price action that tends to happen like right into this area here, right? And I think we can probably tap right into that zone um, even right now as you like move to the right a little bit, then you would see the same exact thing probably happening right into the same area uh, right about here. And the reason why I say that is if you take a look, this is where we consolidated a lot, pushed up. There was a little bit of a like a doji retest, but I think we could, if anything, I'll probably just, there. yeah, uh, probably just hang around in that area a little bit. Because again, if you look at it from a fundamental side, we don't have a lot of like positive news, even with the 21st, that's what everyone's looking towards. Even with that, there's, okay, we're looking at the data. We're not sure yet. Maybe we're going to have, you know, opening and stuff like that. But I do think we can probably come back and kind of like tap into uh, lower levels here, just as like a bottom wake or something like that, and then continue. I'm still very bullish, uh, yeah. given that we're breaking above those monthly levels or and tapping into those monthly levels. But um, I think we're probably just going to hang around that area. Yeah, very, um, very well. Could. But anyway, uh, support and resistance, supply and demand, most important indicator or um, not indicator, but that, that's the one thing that you're you're looking at most. But um, also, I find it interesting that we are reacting to this level over here. Mm -hmm. uh, and prices kind of maybe that's why we're a little bit bearish. We're printing lower low uh, lower highs right now on GJ. Uh, and we finished the week pretty bearish as well. So uh, I think price is reacting to that level, but when it comes to most recent history, um, obviously we are very bullish since the beginning of COVID where price has just been pushing up here. And then we have a couple more trends that we could pay attention to as well on the lower time frames. But um, mm -hmm. I find it very interesting that we are in this level up here and reacting to that level as well as these wick, uh, these wicks over here to the left at 156, 155 very significant level. So that's what I'm kind of paying attention to. You could even bring this in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And that's where we've been seeing these lower highs uh, to end last week and in the, in the middle of the week as well. Um, but let's break it down to the daily now. Uh, the daily is respecting this trend over here. So again, there's no reason to be selling as like a, a longer term kind of a, like an intraday or a swing trade there there's nothing that shows me that you could be kind of swinging this other than these corrective states once we did reach 153 100 mm -hmm. uh created this resistance get a nice move down uh this was i'm sure fundamental back in the beginning of april mm -hmm. um they, they were extending lockdown stuff like that um so we ended up finding support and then just continuing up so what you want to do is you see this high being created you wait for the the support to form consolidate a little bit you wait for your entry key level like right here and then take price right back up to retest that high um so right now more specifically in today's world um one is that 155 yeah i guess so um what i want to do is get rid of that and just draw like a support right here which is obviously previous resistance over here from this consolidation area to the left. We ended up breaking out of that. It, it looked like they were talking about increasing interest rates and that's what uh, this move was from. We retap 156 and then we started coming down. Now forget this bearish candle right over here. This is a perfect, here I'll, I'll block it off, but um, this is a perfect setup of what I look for on the lower time frames all the time. Right, you get this high created price comes right back down, grabs liquidity a little bit. This candle ended up closing with no bottom wick, and we ended up closing with a, a strong body candle on the daily with a wick to fill. This candle came down, created a small bottom wick, and then we ended up filling that wick and then pushing right up to 156. But again, like I said, we're reacting to a very significant level at 156 right now, and um, I think that's why we're starting to come down, plus some positive stuff out of Japan. Uh, but other than that, you know, that's, I, I thought that was pretty interesting. So right now, like I said, creating these lower highs over here and prices in this area. So um, also we had, eh, we don't have to mark that off, but um, I, I don't want to sell anything. Obviously on GJ, when it comes to any kind of scalp, it, you know, you could get some sales if we break below this level. If you get a break in a retest right here, you get a clean move to the left that we could come right back down and retest this support down here. 
This is a pretty significant level around 156, 500, or 153, 500, 600. Uh, if you could get that little scalp that, you know, you break support, retest, you could grab this move to react to this level over here to then grab liquidity and head right back up to retest these highs, right? But those are the only kind of cells I'd be looking for. Uh, but other than that, I'm looking for supports to form and then buy this right back up. I think we're going to mimic exactly what price did right before it broke out of that previous consolidation. Uh, right over here? And the, yeah. And the reason being is because right now, all you have is, again, from a technical side, you're just tapping into some of those monthly, weekly, daily levels, uh, key levels that we're just discussing here. And then from a fundamental side, you don't have much of like positive news, what everyone's again looking towards, or you don't have negative news either. Um, mm -hmm. The only positive news I could probably think of of like an implication would be the UK donating vaccines because that kind of shows that initially when this topic was brought up, uh, a lot of the countries they said that, yeah, we're not going to do that until we have a handle on our own cases. So now with UK and US stepping up and saying like, okay, we're going to go donate, then that could be an implication of their economies doing well um, and, you know, th them having some sort of handle on their own cases domestically. So that's the only positive or like negative news that I can really think of. But other than that, I think we're probably just going to be collecting orders until we can find push past that 156 level. 100%. Yeah, I, th I think we could definitely, we may be ranging in here for quite some time um, mm -hmm. until maybe we reach this key level down here. We want to retest this level and then we could continue right back up just like this. Right. So we may have a slow week on, on GJ. I, I wouldn't be, you know, forcing any kind of trades in this. You know, you guys know how GJ has been uh, very difficult to scalp um, as of late, especially like the start of this year. It's just been kind of off a little bit compared to the way we're kind of used to. And I'm, I'm sure many people can agree with that. So uh, maybe we get that same kind of range, just like you're saying, uh, wait for that, um, those orders to form and then we continue right back up. Yeah, and just pay attention to the details. Like even here, price maintained that bullish trend, even though it was quite subtle, right? Even if here, when the market opens up, if we can maintain some sort of like a bullish structure, those are small indications that tell you that, okay, we're going to continue bullish or bearish. Yeah. But as of right now, it seems like, you know, price is kind of just sitting in this little area. 100%. Yeah, you don't want uh, price to kind of break that low. Because if it does, unless, you know, you grab liquidity and hold support. But if that, in, in that case, I do think we're going to continue to consolidate. But if we create a smaller, higher low right down here, just like you were saying, I think um, it, it will have that gradual push up. Um, and, and this is something I was noticing as well, that, that we could continue right back up and then pay attention to fundamentals because fundamentals is what's going to push us right out of this, just like this interest rate uh, move over here. Uh, I forget who was saying it, but they were hinting at increasing interest rates. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what pushed this up. So let's pop into gold really quickly. In depth. Yes, gold. Um, gold looks awfully similar, doesn't it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you, you use that historical data over here to base on uh, what, what is going on right over here. We've had this fear of inflation. Actually, um, you know, obviously COVID, uh, tensions with Iran, geopolitical pressures is what pushed us up, but mainly COVID, which is what pushed us up to 2076. So ever since then, we've been in this corrective state, you know, you know, the, the risks of COVID have been, you know, we're learning more and more about it. Economy's opening back up. Um, also, you know, factories or, or whatever you want to call them that produce gold and, and manufacture gold, they're opening back up as well. Um, so a lot of this stuff, it's, it's, um, it's, it's been good for the U.S. economy and what's going on uh, around the world. But now, you know, you're getting the geopolitical pressures with, with uh, Israel and and Gaza and, and Palestine, all that mm -hmm. stuff. You got, you know, U.S. and China going back and forth. Uh, a lot of inflation fears as well. People investing in the gold, which always happens. Um, but now, you know, our economy is starting to look a little bit better right now. We still have the inflation fears, but at the same time, uh, we are getting this kind of, uh, you know, consolidation state to then continue to head down if we get some more positives out of the world, just like you guys saw over here. We had this high being created. This was at the time historical highs. We had this corrective phase. Price pushed right back up to retest these highs again. And then all of a sudden you saw a resistance form and then price started to come right back down to 1300. Uh, and then eventually, uh, you know, 1100. 
until mm -hmm. price came right back up. And then 2017, Trump was elected. And then you see price starting to head right back up. So over here, um, I will break it down to the weekly right over here and point out some key areas. We have been respecting this area over here. We'll just mark it off like that. Uh, but ever since creating this resistance up here around 2000, we've been in this corrective state. There we go. So ever since we've been in this corrective state, creating new highs, and then all of a sudden we come right back down to retest those lows, we then finally came right back down to 1680, which is, as you guys know, a very significant level, created that double bottom down here. You can see it on the daily, not really the weekly. You just see this wick, this candle, very nice rejection wick over here, and then price just continued bullish uh, since then. So uh, 1680, very significant level. But we've just been pushing up since then. Looking at the daily over here, ever since retesting 1680, holding this resistance over here, retesting it, we've been in this bullish trend and this bullish channel over here that you guys could pay attention to. And I'll get to this move uh, in a second. But we've just been in this channel, kind of respecting this for quite some time now, since you know um, the end of March, which is the beginning of Q2. Um, so now price has just been creating higher low or higher highs, consolidating a little bit and then retesting those highs, continuing right back up, creating a support, retesting the highs again. And now we are at a significant level. We'll, we'll mark off the resistance that we're at right here around 1910, very significant level, but we came right back down to these candle body highs right over here and these highs over here. So this is a very significant area for me, uh, where price wanted to come right back down and retest. Uh, what did we get last week? We got the, um, we had a lot of positives coming out like ISM manufacturing and services coming out of the U S and that's why you saw, uh, this tank, uh, last week, very strong on the dollar dollar started to create a support. Uh, it looks like we're starting to break this uh, previous resistance over here. But, um, since the beginning of Q2, over here, March or April 1st, we've just been in this um, bearish trend over here. Uh, a lot of negative data coming out of the US, the miss on NFP, um, a lot of different things happened, but we formed the support and then we broke out of that bullish trend, retested it, and then came right back up into this range over here. So are we gonna hold support and then continue right back up, more positives coming out of the US, or is gold gonna continue right back up? This was from, um, negative not negative nfp but kind of a miss last week uh where we saw price retest this area hold support and ended up being a perfect key area it's kind of funny how fundamentals and technicals line up like perfectly but that's what ended up happening we ended up retesting this bullish trend support and then continuing right back up but are we going to hold resistance over here and continue down is this the resistance just like we saw on the monthly over here to the left from 2008 market crash I think, Whatever well, here. first of all, I think that dollar chart was the perfect break. And I do think it's coming back and it's tapping into some key levels again. Same thing with gold here. So if you go down to the weekly or to the daily, and I think you have that zone marked off um, at 1860. So if you look at 1860 and you just extend it over to the left from about, let's take a look. Oh, yeah. That 1860 level from about 2020, <clears throat> August 2020, you see how many times price has just rejected that level and is consolidated oh, yeah. around that level? Like that's straight liquidity right there. Oh yeah, right here? Yeah, and this same thing right where price is rejecting it as a resistance at 1900, that's straight liquidity right there as well. 1900? 1900, oh, right yeah, right there where right price here. exactly consolidated right into that level of 1900. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if you extend that over to the left, there you go. And now if that level is broken, then there's nothing really stopping it from continuing up to 1960, which again, yep. if you look to the left is the same exact thing, which is just liquidity. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and as you can see on the monthly as well, you know, we came pretty much higher than these candle body closes mm -hmm. too. 
uh, to grab liquidity before, you know, basically just tanking uh, the price of gold. Yeah. So we could very well be coming right up into this area. History repeats itself and then continues down. Um, kind of off subject, I love analyzing gold and looking at the prices because I'm big in the history. So I like seeing like, you know, 1920 and I, and I, I associate that with like different things that happen in the US or the world uh, yeah. when it comes to these, these, um, these different years, like 90, we're coming up to 1960, 1968, obviously a very crazy uh, year in our history, but yeah, I just, I thought, I always yeah. thought that was funny. I think we're tapping into 1860. It was a correction of this entire bullish push up that we saw and then consolidation pullback, massive bottom wick rejection. I think we're getting ready to break out of 1900 and then continue up to 1960. Yeah, this is a, this is a nice, uh, a nice wick down here. Big guys came in, uh, grabbed their moves, and, and they're starting to head right back up. So we could get in the next daily candle and weekly as well. If you look at the weekly candle, mm -hmm. this weekly um, could grab liquidity down here and then continue right back up past the highs of these and then fill these wicks up here. Mm -hmm. uh, so the daily, we could get a bottom wick forming over here, and then we pass the high of that candle and just continues right back up, kind of like this move right over here. We didn't have as much of a consolidation, but we did have this corrective state, created a support, previous resistance, and then continue right back up. Yeah. So I, I see the same thing happening, kind of like this bottom wick over here on the daily. Mm -hmm. Price uh, flipping bullish, passing the high of the previous, and then continues up. So that could be a nice play for you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly going to be looking for... Uh, when you get the confirmation from the four hour, if you drop down to the four hour... You see how price is rejecting a, a resistance area right now, which was a previous support. Yep, I, right into that area. Uh, price is rejecting that right into this area here. Um, so I do think exactly what you said, a bottom wick rejection, maybe grab some more liquidity from down here um, and then continue back up bullish. 100%, yeah. Just like a little move right here. Mm -hmm. We take the price right back up. Yep. Hope you guys like my art. But yeah, that's um, that's uh, gold right there, GJ. I hope uh, you guys got a lot out of this. Uh, do you have anything else to add? Uh, that's it, and just be very patient uh, with your trades because I know this last week price consolidated a lot. It consolidated for like many days until NFP came out, um, and then that's what everyone was looking at. So this entire week, you know, price just consolidated. We find broke through, but be patient with your trades. Always keep your eye on higher time frames and always stick to the basics support resistance supply demand whichever one that you go never with never changes structure what was that i was saying it never changes you know like yeah. as long as you got that um you know that that basis of price action uh supply mm -hmm. and demand and, and you know you know where price is going you have a basic idea of fundamentals and what's going on around the world you'll yeah. be good you don't need all these indicators you, you know they help but you don't need them all. Like uh, all of that is supplemental information. Don't make that yeah, the core. They're lagging. Yeah, um, and draw it out. I mean, if you need to draw it out, draw out your you know higher highs, higher lows, whatever price is doing. It can be hard to see in consolidations, but um, just you know stick to the basics: market structure, support, resistance, supply, demand, whichever one that you go with, uh, and just keep building on your basics. So the basics should always be the core of your trading. Thousand percent. But um, guys, have a great week. If you guys need anything at all, I mean, there's not much places you can reach out to me, but you could definitely reach out to Sharma yeah. um, and I'm sure she'll help you out. But um, yo, make sure that you're like putting work in on, on like today or yesterday. And th this comes for the next weekend as well, where you're setting yourself up for success when it comes to, you know, reading books or looking at charts, doing your own breakdowns. You know, you watch our breakdowns. Don't take it, you know, as, as like, you know, the Holy grail, go back and do your own research on like what you think is going to happen. Cause you know, it, we're, we're not, nobody knows what the, what's going to happen in the market. That's, that's the craziest thing about it. Like you could be trading for 30 years and still have no idea. You have some sort of an idea, but you really don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does. And anyone that tells you they do, they're lying. So um, do your own analysis. It's going to make you a much better trader um, and, and take your own initiative, be resourceful and, and, uh, just set yourself up for success. It's, it's the hardest market in the world. So uh, you might as well go into it, you know, with the right mindset and, and doing the right things. Have a great week, everyone. Yes, you too. I'll, I'll talk to you throughout the week, obviously. We'll, we'll, we're going to be uh, doing the second part of risk management this week. Uh, we'll be releasing that and uh, 
looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely.